this emergency route, things like that. We do need to manage some landscape for, for those uses, sports fields and, and those kinds of activities that, that need turf. But if you're not using it and you're just out here driving in circles on your mower all summer, you know, there are alternatives. If that's what you're looking for, we can help you come up with those. And that's how Kate came to us was through our Backyard Stream Repair webinar series program. Um, she participated in an online webinar series. How many of you participated in our online webinar series? And then we invited a handful of local Master Watershed Steward volunteers to join us this morning. And Kate invited the local EAC and the neighbors to come out as well um, and check out the process. And we have another dignitary with us this morning. <laughs> One of my favorite people in the whole world. Good morning. So uh, Julianne Schieffer, who works here in the county, in Montgomery County, but covers the whole southeast and south central part of the state uh, as our urban forester for Penn State Extension. So. She travels with her pickaxe. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great person yeah, to know. know. <laughs> so. um, this, this question might be slightly off topic, yeah. but I'm curious about the legalities involved. So who owns the creek? Does your property actually touch the creek? And obviously you've done a... I own I own um, the I, the opposite side of the stream, and I, we put the strings up so you guys can see it. Oh, so you actually crossed the stream? Yeah, I had a property survey done because I it's an irregular lot, and yeah. I realized I actually own a lot more land than I knew. Right. So. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> but it's a great question, and, and for those of you who did go through the backyard stream repair series, you know that there are certain interventions that you require a permit for. So it's really smart to think about that in advance rather than get yourself bogged down and discover that you have thought about it in the wrong way. So those are really great questions to ask at the beginning. Where's the property line? Who owns the stream? And what intervention am I going to take? Will they trigger the requirement for some kind of permit? Yeah. And, um, and and it's good to know that in advance. Yep. Yeah. And, and take that further, did, did it trigger uh, the need for DB uh, permits and all that kind of stuff? Um, I went through the township for my permits. So knowing that most of the hardscaping practices moving earth changing the shape of the land and putting any hard armoring in you're going to need to talk to your local government potentially your county conservation district and on very large navigable streams even like the army corps of engineers and that permitting process is can be tedious and it can turn people away from doing that which is why today we're going to show you a bunch of things you can do that are outside of the permit sphere. All the things that we're gonna demonstrate and show you today, you can do completely free of permitting um, as long as you're on your own property. You can't just creep into your neighbor's property or out to public land and be a renegade environmentalist as much as you might want to be. Um, and we do see that happening, right? People planting things that aren't necessarily on their property. So um, get property landowner permission first. But we're going to be doing a lot of really cool things today um, that you can do on your own properties, no matter the situation. So did you have anything else in the shows? No. So I'll give you a quick breakdown of the different things we are going to talk about a little bit just about stream health. I want to just look at the stream and talk about assessing stream health because that's a big part of deciding whether you do or don't want to do something on your property. Um, one of the triggers is just my property is experiencing damage, problems, infrastructure, threats, those kinds of things. But if you don't have infrastructure close to your stream and you just have a stream and you're trying to decide if you should do something about it, just understanding what makes a healthy stream and not a healthy stream is really important. So we'll take a quick look at that. And then we're gonna look at two different practices this morning. One is a stream side or stream adjacent practice, which is installing a riparian buffer. Um, and we'll be showing you proper tree planting, talking about different types of trees that we're planting today, uh, making those decisions about choosing and selecting the right plants. Um, putting shelters on and teaching you how the different shelters work and why you might or might not want to use them. And then we're also going to talk about live staking. And live staking is an in-stream restoration or repair practice um, that you, it's about the only thing you can do inside the stream channel without a permit because in the stream work um, is very sensitive, can have a lot of impact on aquatic life and uh, downstream neighbors and potential flood issues and movement of sediment. Um, but live staking doesn't have those impacts. Um, so we'll be showing you both. 
um, how to collect and harvest live stakes and what they are, um, and then how to install them. And depending on the weather and the safety conditions, giving you the chance to get in the water and plant some live stakes, we'll just, hopefully the rain will hold for us, but if it's slippery and it's complicated to get in and out of there, we'll just do some demos and we'll leave those for Kate to struggle with on a safer day. <laughs> so, um, the trees and the live stakes that we are gonna be planting today are provided by our Penn State Extension program. Um, we use a number of different sources to acquire those. Some of the trees um, Beth brought with her today were uh, part of her Master Watershed Stewards uh, Native Tree and Shrub Fundraiser sale um, that she uh, had available for us. And then some of these trees come from um, a native tree nursery that our Greening Lower Susquehanna program manages out in the center of the state. We are not in the Susquehanna River Valley, but the <laughs> trees are coming to you. Um, we get a lot of them through a program called the Keystone 10 Million Trees Initiative, which is something that uh, we're trying to get 10 million trees planted across all of Pennsylvania. Uh, we're at the 5 million mark, so about halfway there since that program started, which is very exciting. And we're going to add 54 more today. <laughs> so, you know, 5 million 54. We're getting there <laughs> so um so we're really grateful for that and uh, we're grateful for you here today coming to learn because while you're learning and getting some hands-on experience you're also providing a little manpower for us and helping get trees in the ground um, as a gift back to kate for letting us use her backyard as a workshop site <laughs>